Hi, this is Misha. And I've been trying to do a few more of the alien races. Star Trek here. And so I thought, why not look at the Dominion? A couple of uh, the Jim Hadar ships. I think in a lot of ways, the Jim Hadar as a villain succeeded and were kind of the same idea that they were originally trying to get with the Borg, but didn't exactly succeed with. They built up the Dominion, and hence and innuendos, kind of very Babylon 5-ish, come to think of it, in Season 2 of Deep Space Nine, culminating in the end episode called the Jim Hadar where we first see this ship here this is the Jim Hadar kinda small do everything ship and the only ship we saw for the Dominion for a number of seasons it is about 110 meters long so not teeny tiny but not not big it has a crew of 42, give or take, Jemadar soldiers, and at least one Vorta. It's also been known to have a founder on board on occasion. It is equipped with phased Polaron beams, which initially defeated Federation shields very handily. It also has... Karma, or Karma, Torpedoes, which seem to, in reality, be the same as Photons. And also, it seems to have some kind of secondary disruptors. It does have more or less traditional shields. It has a pretty advanced transporter. And it has the ability to use tachyon scanners to detect cloaked vessels, at least, you know, some of the time. Intermittently. Cruising warp seems to be about 7, but the max warp of about 9.6. This has been used as a fighter, a patrol ship, a scout craft, or just kind of a strike fighter. Again, this was the only ship we saw for the Dominion, for the Jim Hadar, for a number of uh, seasons. So it, it filled several roles. It was kind of analogous to the Defiant, kind of in that same size, or a Klingon uh, bird of prey. It's a unique design, kind of based off a bug. Often this is called the Jimadar bug ship. It doesn't have a traditional bridge with like view screen and stuff. Instead, their devices are used. Only the Vorta and the Jim Hadar captain, known as the first, really saw what was going on outside. The rest of the Jim Hadar just did their little duties. There's no medical bay, no food replicators, no real amenities. I'm not even sure if Jim Hadar really slept. Spartan would be putting it lightly. At least the Spartans had sex. The Jim Hadar, not so much. This was originally built as a studio model, a few different ways and times, and then eventually was turned into like a CGI when we get into the Dominion War era, so season 6 and 7. It's pretty cool. The Jim Hadar were a very credible threat, the Dominion was a very plausible enemy. With good build and tension, and they weren't just straight up evil. They weren't just maliciously evil for no reason. They had their own agendas and were actually very intelligent. Well, once the war kicked off, we needed at least another Dominion ship. We ended up eventually getting two more, but... First, we saw this one here, the Jim Hadar 
battle cruiser. Our warship. It's a much larger vessel. It's about 750, 760 meters tip to tip. Of course, there is quite a bit of dead space in there. They said in the Deep Space Nine episode it was as large as a Galaxy class. So it's actually a little bit longer, but mass-wise it's a little bit thinner in some areas. We don't really know much about it. It probably has about the same max speed and everything as the fighter. We know that it has a large front photon, or not photon, probably camera torpedo launcher, capable of shooting multiple torpedoes either at once or in quick succession with a pretty wide arc. It also has at least a couple of large, powerful uh, Polaron beams or disruptors, yada yada. And it has quite a large troop, you know, Jemadar capacity to deliver them where they need to be. In fact, I've seen an estimate as high as 2,500. And since, again, they kind of stack them in like cordwood, yeah, I could see that. It's not like they care about comfort. This was considered at least twice as powerful as a Galaxy class. And was pretty much the Dominion's heavy guns. But we really don't know much more about it. It was just in battle scenes. There was a physical model built of this, as well as a CGI. Now there was one more Dominion ship called the Battleship, which was even larger than this. And hopefully one day Eagle Moss will release it. But so far, no luck. So these are the two out of the three Dominion ships. It's worth pointing out this fighter here is capable of atmospheric operations. It can land and take off, but it really can't fight in an atmosphere. It's not meant to be an atmospheric fighter, but it is capable of at least operating with limited ca capacity. I'm sure the warship or battle cruiser here is not. It's too big. The Dominion cranked these out pretty much cookie cutter, much like they did the Jim Hadar themselves, making in the, them in the thousands. And we know that the Dominion was around for at least a thousand years. Wasn't really into research, science, and change. So it's very possible that these ship models were more or less in service and unchanged for centuries. Or at least decades. Because up until the Federation, Klingons, the Dominion didn't really seem to have found much resistance back in the Gamma Quadrant. So these are probably kind of older traditional designs, but still very advanced. And again, they are just for combat and patrol and, re and enforcing the Dominion's will. There's really no uh, trade or exploration or scientific study going on with the Jemadar ships. That's just not what they're for. So they're very extremely focused on combat and Jemadar style combat at that I'm sure most of you are very aware of Deep Space Nine. It's one of those shows that has become very popular after it was on air. It wasn't hated back in the 90s, but it's become more appreciated now than it used to be. But if you haven't or haven't watched it in a long time, check it out, frankly. It's a really well-written show with a lot of great primary and secondary characters, and they're very good at more of a arc style of storytelling. Which is very much more the modern take than it was back then. Voyager is your more episodic series. And uh, Deep Space Nine was more of the ongoing archetype. And yeah, the Jim Hadar bug attack fighter. And the Jim Hadar warship battle cruiser. Oh, one other tactic that Jim and Dar really liked to do, they were real keen on ramming ships. They had nothing against kamikaze maneuvers with these. If it looks like the battle wasn't going uh, their direction. 
And just because, just to review the Eagle Moss ships. Pretty neat. I mean, this was done as a micro machine and a few other models over the years, but it's got a good point of metal. It's pretty solid feeling. I really can't say anything bad about it. It feels very detailed. But the, uh, the battleship here is pretty unique. I don't know that really many others have done models, even smaller ones like this, of this particular ship. It's just not as well represented as the other one. And so, honestly, of the two, this is my favorite. It's cool looking. Still kind of keeps that insect vibe, but it's got more of a pincer going on. So, yeah, I definitely like this one a lot. And so I definitely hope they come out with the battleship. Well, appreciate you tuning in as always. If you could, like, share, and subscribe, and also check out some of my other videos here. This is Misha, and I will catch you next time.